In today's video, I will be sharing with you my top seven steps that you can take this year to improve your landscape photography. Welcome, my name is Stephen, and I'm a photographer based in New Zealand, and I specialize in fine art landscape photography using medium format film and digital cameras. There is lots of content that I will share in this video, so I hope you stick around to the end, it's gonna be fun. And let's get started, let's jump straight into it. So the first step that you can take to improve your photography this year is to learn to visualize the lighting conditions. The quality of light is one of the most important aspects of photography and is essential for landscape photography. Over the last few years, I've spent a lot of time just observing how the light behaves throughout the day, wherever I am and whatever the weather conditions are and without my camera in my hand. It was a worthwhile process for me and it was something that I did daily. Without my camera in my hand, I would watch the light throughout the day and see how it affects the surrounding landscape in every direction. I learned to visualize how the light will be in a given area at any time of the day, in different weather conditions and in any bearing. The key knowledge areas of light that you should have a really good understanding of are white balance and color temperature at the different times of day, lighting direction, and its impact on the landscape, shadows and contrast, dynamic range and histograms. You must be capable of visualizing how the light will affect the contrast and the colors in the landscape at different times of the day before you photograph it and understanding the limitations of your camera system in relation to those lighting conditions and how you will manage them. And remember, there are three types of lighting that you should be aware of. They are front lighting, side lighting, and backlighting. Make sure you can visualize them at your locations. So the second step that I'm gonna share with you is choose the right aspect ratio for the landscape you're about to shoot. The process of aspect ratio selection is mainly to provide a suitable frame size for the content of your image. Your chosen aspect ratio should complement the composition of the scene and should emphasize the subjects within it. It can also be considered a boundary that means the focus of your viewer's eyes. Whenever you compose your landscape photos, you're essentially designing the image. You are a composer of the landscape around you. The choices you make on your camera location, your tripod height, and the position of the objects that you place in your camera frame and the distances between them affect the look and feel of your final photos. You must look closely at the details and the shapes in the foreground of the surrounding landscape. These details are diagonal lines, curves, S-curves, symmetry, textures, and tones. Look carefully at the spaces between them and your main subjects of interest and the edges of your aspect ratio. When you compose your photograph, you must consider how the eyes of your viewers will move through it. In essence, this is the art of composition, and I will cover this next. The best aspect ratio is one that complements your composition of your scene emphasizes the subjects that you place in it and provides some negative space between the key subjects and around the edges of the frame so that your viewer's eyes can move around your photos easily. The third step that you can take to improve your photography this year is create stronger compositions. The best compositions will guide your viewer's eyes through your photos so it is essential to consider how the eyes work. In what we consider as being the Western world we read from left to right. Over many years, our eyes have been trained to start on the left and move to the right. When you read words or look at photographs, your eyes naturally move from left to right. It's second nature for our eyes to work this way. And when they do it, it feels comfortable to them. Contrastingly, and in many cases, when it works the opposite way, it can feel uncomfortable. When you are composing your photos out in the field, Take a moment to let your eyes scan the viewfinder of your camera a few times and check if the composition you have arranged is working or not. Your eyes should feel comfortable with your photography compositions. They should move around your photo naturally and with ease and without getting stuck anywhere in your photo. The key knowledge areas for composition that you should have a good understanding of are as per the following. Identify your key subjects in your landscape. Find some foreground interest for it. Connect your foreground interest to your key subject in a way that your eyes find pleasing. Pay attention to the spacing between your foreground interest, your key subject, and the edges of your frame. You should know how your camera position, lens choice, tripod height will affect your key subject and your foreground interest. One thing to remember 
is that what you do not place in your composition is equally as important as what is in the composition. Once you are happy with your composition, take some time to remove the distractions by fine tuning your camera position, your lens choice and your tripod height. The removal of objects that do not add value to your final photo will surely produce a stronger photo. The fourth step that you can take this year to improve your photography is plan your photography trips. If you want to be successful, you have to set yourself up for that success. Hopefully, it's no surprise that it is the same way with landscape photography. During sunrise and sunset shoots, the light changes dramatically and quickly, and the time during these periods is short. With this in mind, it is essential to plan your shots, and this will put you in the best possible position to creating a successful image in the best possible light. There are six steps that will help the all planning process and they are as per the following. Number one, finding inspiration and image visualization. A quick tip, a great way to do this is use Google Images. There have been lots of photos been taken over the years. So if you're looking for inspiration for a location you're thinking of visiting, just jump on Google and have a look at the previous images that have been loaded. But bear in mind, it's not cool to copy other people's work. Number two, location selection. Google Maps is a great way to fine tune your locations that you want to visit. Also Google Maps, you can use it for route planning. So if you've got a multi-day trip coming up, you can quite easily go in there, place some way markers and you can plan your trip very easily. Number three, when is the best time to visit your location? Well, I strongly recommend using an app called the Photographer's Emphasis, or you can try using photo pills. You can go into a map, you can drop a pin, you can see lighting direction at any given time of the day, and it will also tell you when the golden hour is and also twilight. It's a great app, go check it out. Number four, work out what the weather conditions are gonna be like at your locations. Well, there's a great app called Clear Outside that will let you do this. You can go in there and you can look at weather, I think up to eight or 10 days ahead, and it will tell you whether it's raining, the percentage of rain, it will tell you the cloud percentage coverage, It'll even tell you what type of cloud, low, medium or high. It's a good little app. One thing I would recommend is that you cross check it with another weather app because sometimes these apps have different data sources and they sometimes vary. Number five is safety. If you're planning on traveling worldwide and you're not familiar with some of the issues that are going on in other countries that may affect your safety, then I strongly recommend you checking out a website called World Nomads. They have lots of information in there about other countries and issues and safety alerts, etc. If you are going to travel out into remote areas, you might consider purchasing something like a Garmin InReach. And they are great little SOS devices. You have to pay for a subscription with them. And you can also send text messages over them and get weather updates. I have one, it's the Garmin InReach Mini. It's a great little device and I always take it with me when I'm traveling away from home. Number six is make a plan. Write it down and share it with your family so that when you're traveling overseas or away from home, they know where you are. And remember, the best plan is one created and then improved. If the weather changes while you're away, then don't be afraid of deviating from your plan. Just remember to let people know. And just one thing I would just like to say, when you're out in the field taking photos, please make sure that you forget about all these technicalities. Be in the moment. Don't be afraid of failure. Reflect on your trip and your photos when you return. Self-reflection is a powerful approach to understanding your strengths and weaknesses. So the fifth thing that you can look at this year to improve your landscape photography is choosing the best equipment for your needs. If you're going on a landscape photography trip and you need to decide what equipment you're going to take, then obviously you just need to bear in mind things that will affect your experience and the end results of your photographs, especially if there's lots of walking involved. Some things to consider when you're choosing your equipment are weight versus performance, time restrictions and energy levels, lens choices, tripod versus in-body stabilization, and filters. Every landscape photography trip is different, so choose wisely. And a quick tip for you, there is more information on those first five steps that we've just spoke about available on my website in my blog. There are links available in the description section down below for you to go and check out. So the sixth step that you can take this year to improve your photography is find your post-processing style. There are many different post-processing styles and you must find your own style. There are a few tips that I can give you that will help you with this, and they are as per the following. And number one is remove your expectations. Let your emotional attachments to your photograph locations disappear so that you can see the true strengths and weaknesses of your photos. Allow some time before you edit your photos from when you actually took the photo. Number two, less is more. 
apply the post-processing that is required to your photos and don't apply everything that you've learned. Take a break when you're editing your photos and this will help. Number three, targeted adjustments are better than global adjustments. Apply contrast and sharpening adjustments to the key subjects in your photos only. The adjustments should complement your original compositional intent. Number four, not all colors should be present in a photo. Learn to recognize the important colors in your photos. Try removing individual colors from your photos using saturation sliders, and then slowly add them back in with reference to a color wheel. Opposite colors and adjacent colors work well together. Number five is remove distractions. Distractions are more obvious in printed photos. And if you haven't started printing your photos, then you should do that because you'll learn a lot. However, your spot removal tool should be used to remove unwanted distractions from your photos. And the seventh thing that you can do this year to improve your photography is to recognize that change is the heartbeat of growth. It is essential to recognize that your photography journey is not linear, it's circular, because to improve, you must continually find ways to learn. You must prioritize and continually strengthen your creative skills. Feedback and reflection is essential to your growth. Find ways to continually seek feedback on your photos, through your peers and your family and your close friends. Take time to reflect on your work, to identify your strengths and weaknesses. Try to transition your weaknesses into strengths. Take a wider view, look at your opportunities and your barriers. Try to remove those barriers so that your opportunities will grow. Learn to recognize when your photography is changing and don't be afraid of it. Learn to embrace it because it will lead you to meet new people, it will give you new skills and new experiences. Remember, be unique and ignore background noise. Build on your uniqueness and try to create bodies of work with a common cohesive feel that represent you. And that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed that and I really hope that you learned something. Just quickly, merchandise, hats and t-shirts and are available for sale on my website. Go check those out. I've got prints for sale if you want to buy one of my prints. They are limited edition prints, editions of eight. And if you're the sort of person who likes to work one-on-one -on -one with people to improve your skills instead of reading and learning on by watching videos, then perhaps consider booking me for a one-to-one -one tuition. You can do that through my website. I hope you have a fantastic week. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you next time. Bye for now, take care.